it's very tempting to go back to being 17 knowing what I know now. Just so I could be the smartest person in the room for like a second. That'd be nice. What would you do if you got a second shot at life? For most of you, that's not a difficult question to answer because we all fantasize a bit about what our life would be today if we had changed something in the past. But how to explain your ideas in English grammatically correct and not being misunderstood? That's what you need the conditionals for. A grammar topic that covers unreal situations or something that might be happening. It's not an easy topic at all for an English learner because it requires your understanding of its time range and you being quite well familiar with English tenses. That is why examiners ask questions like what if or if it were up to you, what would you do? Especially if these questions are asked during the international exams like IELTS, for example, to check your grammar knowledge because conditionals help examiners evaluate you. And today, I'm going to cover this hard topic in an easy and funny way with the great comedy film Seventeen Again. Seventeen Again is funny and pleasant to watch, goofy a bit, with a plot a little bit more surprising and acting a little better than expected, because the cast is really brilliant. Zac Efron and Matthew Perry. Unfortunately, Matthew is not with us anymore, but we're going to remember him as a great comedy actor. And this movie on the channel today is to honor his work and talent. You find that it was easier to imitate my facial expressions or the way that I talk? You, you have a very distinct smile. I do? Yeah, you go like this. <laughs> yeah, I do do that. <laughs> exactly. We are going to learn phrases and idioms of intermediate level and practice conditional 1, 2 and 3 and if clauses with examples from the movie scenes. Let's start and have fun together. No way. It's freaking me out. It's freaking me out! I'm pubescent! This is Mike O'Donnell, the basketball player at school. Just talk to the scout again. You play half the game I know you're capable of. He's prepared to offer you a full scholarship. His coach tells him if he plays at least half what he's capable of, the scout will offer Mike a full scholarship. Scholarship is the payment for the education, so it means Mike will study free of charge. The expression be capable of is always used with the preposition of. Please don't make a mistake by avoiding it. And be capable of is a synonym to the words can and be able to do something, meaning if you are capable of doing something, you have skills, abilities and qualities for it. Right from the start, we see the example of the conditional one and if clause. If you play great, the scout will offer you the scholarship. We also see that it's a complex sentence which consists of two parts. The main part is he will offer you a full scholarship. The other part of the sentence is if clause that starts in most of the cases with if. You can use also some other prepositions here, but if is the most common one. If clause is either present simple or present progressive depending on what you are emphasizing. The fact or the process. However, the main clause is future simple tense. I understand it might be confusing, but that's what we have to remember to avoid mistakes. Let's have a look at some examples. If I find your address, I will send you an invitation. If I don't see him this afternoon, I will phone him in the evening. Are these examples telling us about some unreal situations? You're right, they are not. The conditional one is a probable situation that can actually happen under a particular condition and its time range is present and future. Free ride to college and the world's your oyster, kid. Thanks, coach. The world is your oyster. Obviously, it's an idiom. If the world is your oyster, you can do what you want and where you want. Right before the game, Mike's girlfriend tells him that she's pregnant, but she doesn't want him to give up his dream. A big game. That's your future. No, you have the baby's to... my future. That's crazy, You're Mike. No, I can't let you throw this all away. I won't let you throw it away. Throw away, for example, a career, chance, an opportunity. A phrase means to waste it because of behaving in a particular way. Mike, I can tell you're down. You're looking at Scarlett kicking you out of the house and the kids wanting nothing to do with you as a negative. 
Be down, level B2, synonym to unhappy, means to feel sad, depressed, or generally unwell. Mike O'Donnell is a grown man now, with a wife who kicked him out of the house and two kids. The world never turned into a noyster for him because he sacrificed his college education and basketball for his family. That's sad. I guess it's mostly negative, isn't it? Really? Yeah. I had no I had no upside for that. Yeah. Upside, level B1, especially in American English, means the positive part of a situation that is generally bad. You're going to have a big promotion today, right? Yes. Yes, I am. Today, everything turns around for me. See? Knock him dead! Mike hopes his promotion might change his things and turn them around. Turn around is a phrase that means not only turn your face or body in the opposite direction, like this one, for example, but also change things from being unsuccessful to successful. And his childhood best friend Ned says, knock them dead. It's an idiom that is used to tell someone to perform or play as well as possible. The promotion never happened. His kids don't enjoy spending time with his dad because he's not aware of their interests. And his wife is trying to change her life as well. Why are you destroying our yard? It's not our yard, it's my yard, remember? You took the road not taken, and I get the yard. You took the road not taken. It is not an idiom or a phrase. She's referring to a poem by Robert Frost, Road Not Taken, which is about a person standing at a fork and choosing the path to take, knowing that both of them will turn his life into something, but he still would wonder what his life could be if he had chosen a different path. With this short sentence, Scarlett described their marriage for us very detailed, and she says, I choose the yard. So she also has dreams that she never fulfilled, and now it is the time to change it. You, you have no right. Really? So I've spent the last 18 years of my life listening to you whine about all the things that you could have done without me and I have no right? Whine, level B2, synonym of complain, means to repeatedly express disappointment or unhappiness. So Mike has been whining all the time, meaning constantly complaining. Here we see a great example of how to express the imaginary situation in the past. The situation could happen, but to create the impossibility of it, or to express that it's only a wish, there is a present perfect form of the verb after could that shows it. Could have happened. For example, could have done, could have called, could have said. It is the form of the conditional three that shows the imaginary situation in the past. So you see how grammar is actually important in the English language to be used properly, because the sentence structure can tell us a lot what we mean exactly, the possibility of the action, the impossibility of it, or if it's just what we wish for. You spent about an hour working on it, and then you spent the next two days complaining about if you had gone to college, then you could have hired someone else to do it. Scarlett it goes into more details of his road not taken. And I believe you can see now the forms of the conditional that represents the past time and shows what we imagine could have happened. The main clause, you could have hired someone else to do it, is formed by a modal verb in the past and present perfect. And what about the sentence without a modal verb? In this case, would is used instead. If I had found her address, I would have sent her an invitation. If I hadn't studied, I wouldn't have passed my exams. The if clause is formed by past perfect no matter if the main clause is with the modal verb or without. Look, try to see things from my point of view. I am extremely disappointed with my life. I never asked you to marry me. Yeah, but I did. Try to see things from my point of view, meaning the way I see it. Depending on what kind of way of seeing the things are, you can say from a practical point of view, from an economic, financial, business point of view, scientific, legal, political point of view. And it's always from my point of view. Do not say in my point of view. You don't have to do me any more favors then. We're not going to hold each other back anymore, okay? Hold something or somebody back a phrase, level C2, means to stop someone developing or doing well as they should. You came! Of course I came. Now what kind of bridesmaid would I be if I didn't hold your hand during the divorce? Mike? Naomi? Naomi. I don't care. 
What bridesmaids would I be if I didn't hold your hand during the divorce? If Naomi was her bridesmaid, it means that she's very close to her, maybe even a best friend. Mike and Naomi definitely don't like each other. And here we have an example of conditional two that represents the present time, the situation that could happen if the things were different now, but they're not. That's why we just imagine them. I would send her an invitation if I found her address. If I had a lot of money, I wouldn't stay here. If I were you, I would not do this. By the last example, you see that the verb to be has only one form in the past tense for conditionals, where. So its form was is not used to form conditionals. So the main clause is formed by would and the verb in its first form, it is future in the past. And if clause is formed by past simple tense. So guys, we've just gone through all three types of conditionals. I know it's a lot to take even for a review. So let's make it simple. Conditional one, it is a real situation that can happen at the present or future time if we have or do something to make it happen. If you invite me, I will come. Conditional two, it is an unreal situation that could happen at the present time if the circumstances were different. If it worked for you, I wouldn't be here today. The conditional three, it is an imaginary situation that could have happened in the past. According to you, the way you see it, I would have helped her if she had asked me. Mike's wish to change his past comes true. He's given a chance to take the different path at the fork and see what it might bring him. So what do you think he would choose now? Have you ever been a Norse god, vampire, or time-traveling cyborg? I've known you since, what, first grade? I think maybe I would have told you. Maybe I would have told you. Is it a real or an unreal situation? Unreal, correct. It is an imaginary situation that could have happened in the past. Conditional three. This is my chance to have my life over, but to do it right. Wouldn't you do that if you had the chance? No, no, I would not. I'm rich and nobody stuck my head in the toilet today. Wouldn't you? If you had a chance, it's conditional two. He is using conditional two because he's talking about the present time. If now you had a chance to live your life over, wouldn't you take it? Don't even think about sucking me into this with you. I'm here to enroll my son in school. Mark, sup? Enroll, level B2. Put yourself or someone else onto the official list of members of a course, school, college, group, etc. Excuse my dad. He's not used to talking to attractive women. Oh, thank you for that uh, flattering yet totally inappropriate comment. Ned falls in love from the first sight with the principal. She says that Mike's compliment is flattering and inappropriate. When you say that something is flattering, you mean that it makes someone look even uh, better than they are. So she's being modest and implies that she might not be that much attractive. And the comment is inappropriate, meaning it's unsuitable for the time, place, or situation. I don't look like a douche. What a douche. We're going shopping. <laughs> that was really funny. I don't look like a douche. And someone in the back, what a douche. That is someone unpleasant or even disgusting. You can also say a douchebag. Why is the new kid waving at me? I don't know, but if that boy were an apple, he'd be a delicious. If that boy were an apple, he'd be a delicious. It sounds a bit cringe, but I like the comparison. The word delicious, as you see, is from a capital letter, meaning it's a name. It's a type of apples named delicious, and on the sweet chart, it's right in the middle, meaning it's not too sour and not too sweet, just right. So she means he's perfect. And also she uses the conditional here. By its structure, we understand it's conditional too. It's about the present time. There is where instead of was, as it should be like this. Yes, you remember. And would in the main clause is hidden in the contraction. Apostrophe and the letter D. So the full variation would be, if the boy were an apple, he would be a delicious. Hey, how's it going? Things are looking up. Coach Murphy practically put me on the team. Alex? Things are looking up. 
It's a phrase of level C1 and it has different meanings. If you talk about a situation like Mike, for example, it means it gets better. It's improving. If you talk about the information, it means you try to find it. For example, look the word up in the text or I will look up the train times. If you talk about the person, it means to visit the person, especially if you are nearby. For example, don't forget to look me up when you come to Ottawa. Look her up when you arrive. Since this we're practically family, you know, my dad says we should just keep an eye on each other, you know? Uh, yeah, why not? Mike meets his son, Alex, and says we are practically family and all. What does this and all mean exactly? I hear this phrase all the time from the native speakers. It's quite frequently used. So it means kind of alone with everything I just said, or in addition to everything that is associated with that, kind of emphasizing what you mean or what you offer. For example, in a store, a salesperson may ask you, would you like to wrap it and all? The person means, in addition to your purchase, would you like it wrapped? Another example, we are going camping and all. Let's not forget sleeping bags. So, and all means everything that goes with camping or associated with camping. Stamp. The guy Stan is a bully and also Maggie's boyfriend, a daughter of Mike, who never knew that. If I wanted you in the cafeteria, I would have taped you to a lunch lady. You little punk. If I wanted you in the cafeteria, I would have taped you to a lunch lady. He means that he doesn't want to see Alex there and Alex should leave as soon as Stan comes. Let's look at the example of the conditional. The if clause is in the past simple that represents present time in the conditionals. So he means if now or today I wanted to see you, but the main clause is in the future perfect in the past, would have taped, which shows us the action in the past. So what type of conditional is that? Some grammar books say it's conditional exceptions. Some call it mixed conditionals. So as you see, we can mix the forms of if clauses and main clauses depending on what time we are referring to. So using this so-called mix, Stan says that he would have taped Alex earlier or before if he wanted to see him here. I know, it's even more confusing than conditionals themselves, but it gets better and better with practice. And movies help a lot to remember grammar, because you hear it all the time. If you understand the time you use present, past or future, you will use the correct type of if clause and main clause, because they do not always represent the same time, as we see here in the example. What did you learn at school today? That I'm a bad dad. I told you that high school was the wrong no, thing. No, no, no. High school was right. But it's not about basketball. It's about helping Alex and Maggie. We see that Mike, even being given a second chance, doesn't choose himself again. He chooses his family. He looks exactly like Mike used to look in high school. You need to hook up with someone new. Yeah, I deserve to have somebody smile at me. Deserve, level B1 to have earned something by good or bad actions or behavior. Mind that the verb deserve is not used in the progressive tense because it shows the facts, not the process. This was kind of distracted, as I imagine Alex was, at hearing about how his mother, who is still married, by the way, is planning on running around with every guy she can get her hands on. Distracted, level B2, stop giving attention to something, unable to think clearly, be confused. I'm just saying, Naomi. Naomi. I don't care. This film has a great message of how crucial it is to see what's really important to you and not lose it during your life. What do you know about girls? I used to date the most beautiful girl in school and I let her slip through my fingers. But I'm not gonna let that happen to you. Slip through someone's fingers, idiom, not to take an opportunity or lose it, through not taking care or making an effort. Ned doesn't give up and does everything to win the heart of the school principal. I'm just going to ask you out, okay? Like a grown-up. If it turns into anything else, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. 
Or you can say when we get to it. It is an idiom, an expression that means you will not worry about a possible future problem, but will deal with it if it happens. Nice expression to remember, guys, and to use, especially in a situation when there is no need to worry about something that might not even happen. But this is not a date. No, in no way a date. And if I do this, you will stop the inappropriate behavior and gifts. Yes. If I do this, you will stop inappropriate behavior and gifts. Is it a real situation? Yes, it is. It's conditional one that shows us the future time, the situation that will happen if we do something to make it happen. Why are you dating him? He's bullying your little brother. Who do you think you are, my father? Hey, what happened? Hey. What do you want? No. Rub it in my face, say, say I told you so. So Stan broke up with Maggie. And because Mike told her he was not the one for her, she is now saying, you want to rub it in my face? It's an expression that means to remind a person of something embarrassing and make them feel worse or even more embarrassed. Kind of criticize and point on their mistake. It has a similar meaning when someone says, I told you so. One day you're gonna meet a boy who treats you the way that you deserve to be treated. Like the sun rises and sets with you. Like the sun rises and sets with you. An amazing idiom to remember when you tell someone how much you love him or her. It means to believe that someone is the most wonderful and important person in the world. To love and adore someone more than anyone else. It's very poetic and very romantic. I believe you will have a lot of fun watching the movie 17 again that has plenty of examples of conditionals. I didn't include them all. Please write in the comments other examples you find in there. It will definitely help you remember conditionals. And for practicing them, there is a link in the description to a grammar website that has a great number of interesting exercises for you. Hit me the like for the video and we'll see again each other on Thursday. But if you let me, I swear I will spend the rest of my life making it up to you.